So how was making games back like 10, 11, 12 years ago? That's more or less around when I started. We had a real engine tree for free. Now this was very hidden. I thought that when I was going to create a game, I will need to write everything from scratch. But uh, the reality was that there was game engines back, back then. Of course, Unity was the most popular one. I learned that when I got into a local school of game development, uh, they really didn't know much. So I ended up researching myself like how to make games and I found Unreal Engine 3. Now, you will think, wow, Unreal Engine 3 must be ancient, right? Uh, yeah, in the way that video games update in this industry, it is ancient. But at the same time, it was beyond its time. Like when you see it, it even had like better graphics than the one uh, that the games that I was playing back then. Like, well, you open the Unreal editor, open the default map, and then all this lining was there. And well, it, it, it was really, really nice. And I got in, I got in love with it. I, I got in love with Unreal. I got in love with how how you can create games there. Uh, but I couldn't have the ability to create a game there. Uh, back then, Unreal Engine did have some scripting called Kismet, but it's not like blueprints where you could like create games from scratch and everything. It was limited to some things, so you needed to learn Unreal scripting. So I tried to learn it, and I learned a bunch. I learned a lot about unreal uh, about the framework about the player controller all these things um i really got into a deep dive about how it worked now it's funny because in the past unreal engine actually it haven't changed back when i learned you still have the player controller you, you still have the pump you still have the hat and all the logic still the same nothing has changed since then so back then was a little bit harder to learn a little bit harder because there were not many resources and it was harder to produce something if you go to unreal engine now you will see that you have marketplace you have free assets you have meta humans and if you browse tutorials on youtube you will find a lot back then i had different resources one of them was 3D Bus. 3D Bus was the channel that gave me the joy of making 3D. The instructor, Zach Parrish, and all the other instructors that were there, but especially Zach Parrish, they were like extremely fun, extremely fun, and extremely engaging when they give their classes. Up until now, I haven't seen anyone that have matched this level of teaching as they had so what happened there and so uh, you get you got resources there other than that you go to e3d e3d was like training dvds and it was like an amazing resource now it's all all of this that i'm mentioning is now free on youtube by the way except e3d i think but a lot of their resources, they even say it themselves, they like a lot of our free content, it's much better than the paid ones. And it's true. Their level was really high and the results were really high. So when you learn from them, you actually had a really, really high level. Now, compared to now, there are a lot of resources. A lot of people can teach you how to make games. But back then, you really needed to learn the basics like how to model, how to texture, how to UV. You still need to learn these things now, but somehow the entry barrier is lower and lower. Like you have auto UV tools, you have like uh, meta humans, you have a lot of these things. So what I see a lot of beginners that they ask is things like, oh, I created this environment, but I need to create a custom mesh. How can I make it? That didn't happen then. You had to study from the very beginning. And one of the resources that I had in the past was Polygon. Before, we used to use more forums. Forums was the way we learn. We exchange experience. Back then, there were two main forums I, I used to frequent. 
one was Polygon, and the second one was uh, Unreal Engine forums. Unreal Engine forums kind of change. I feel like they wanna go through that route again. I don't know how it will go. That's why they partner with ArtStation. But Polycon back then was really a place where you could meet people that work in the industry, um, especially for three D and all these CG graphics. And it was specifically for games because that's what the name was Polygon. Like today, you don't really need to worry about polygons, right? You have Nanite and all these things. In Unreal Engine 4, you had to worry a little bit. And in Unreal Engine 3, you need to worry a lot. So, and even before that, uh, even more. So you had a lot of old tutorials. You can see the workflows that people did. Like, and back then, you, you tried to use more textures instead of modeling. And, but in any way, what I'm... My point is, there was this exchange between professionals and people who were learning, and it was a it was a great learning experience because the professionals were also active. What the professionals did was researching, like, oh, there is this new tool. Let me try it. This new hard surface modeling tool. Oh, you can use the booleans. Oh, there is new this new substance tool that is going out. Let's let's try new things, and people ex uh, will exchange information there, and basically, uh, you will get feedback. Like, oh, you know, the way you are doing it is not the right way. I'm, I, I found another way to do it, and it was this constant feedback loop that you get when you show your projects which i don't see it now with the advance of social media compared like the polygon for example some years ago in facebook when people used to use it more uh, it's like oh look i made an environment and it's like oh nice uh, have a like share whatever there in polygon you really get the harsh critique that you don't see much often these days they will tell you if you make a character and the anatomy is wrong and the proportions are wrong and like everything's wrong it's like hey you're taking shortcuts here like your character really looks bad you need to go back and study anatomy sorry for that you need to go back and study anatomy and basically um people had a tougher um uh, like a people were tougher right that uh, if if you say that to people now they will ah oh, i like you're offending me whatever right uh, but back then it was the only way to learn so a lot of people there in that community were like really open to listen to this kind of critique and it forced me to go back to the fundamentals several times when i try every time i try a shortcut like hey look i'm making a character it's like hey go back that's why uh, i took lessons with Scott Eaton, uh, it was an amazing class. He still gave the class. And all this foundation really helped me to speed things up when Unreal Engine 5 came. Now, a lot of things have changed during the years. Like I also got experience as game developer when I was working in, in Ubisoft as a level artist and now as a indie game developer and I earn, I'm learning new and new and new things. Uh, a lot of things, you know, have changed. Um, but I believe that the core of the, the teachings that I got when I started game development were a huge pillar that support the projects that I'm doing today. Like even if that technology change, even if there's new features, new tech and everything. Basically, when you have a really strong foundation, like in anatomy, art theory, or anything, you can just learn much faster because game development is all this combination of different skill sets that combine together, you can create a game. Recently, I'm more interested like in UI, I'm more interested in programming and a lot of this stuff. So this kind of thing, I didn't have a chance when I worked for Ubisoft because I was a specialist there doing environments. 
nice. I had the feeling that I wanted to try something new. So the game, the game industry really speed up fast, but you shouldn't really worry about how fast it, it goes. Uh, because the foundation you get today is basically the same one you will get like in 10 years. Just technology will change. Things will, will get easier for, for everyone, for developers, for the customer, for everyone. And that's the beauty of, of this. Um, I highly encourage you to, to learn fundamentals, to, to focus on what's important, to not take any shortcuts. And you are in a great place. If you are starting to learn games now, uh, learn how to create games and all these things, you are in a great position because basically it's never been a better time to learn. Honestly, the resources that you have here uh, don't compare to the resources that I had before when I started out. So I hope you take advantage of those. Um, if, if you like this video, if you want to learn more about game development, we can connect, subscribe to not lose uh, any new video, and let me know in the comments what you think, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.